It is cool to watch them. Oh, nice. Oh, I just missed. Oh, I gotta go for the headshot. Top shot. Yeah. Oh, I don't even see the guy there. Was it. I can't even see that guy. Yes. Alright, so I'm at Immerse 2016 and I've got Ron Green yeah. here. He is, are you the founder or the inventor of the Tebow? I'm the inventor of the Tebow. Inventor of the Tebow. And the Tebow is a peripheral for the Vive that allows you to uh, play bow and arrow games with a real bow. Um, so can you speak to uh, why you decided to go that route? Like what, what's the benefits of a peripheral like that? Yes. Well, my background is... Uh, First, I'm a chiropractor, so as a chiropractor, the archer's bow pull happens to be an excellent postural exercise, yeah. working the muscles, strengthening the muscles in the back of your shoulders and your upper back, Okay. provided you use good technique and you work both sides of your body. So, basically, you want know, people should be alternating their, their hands in order to get an even workout? Yes, once they get a good feel with it, okay. they can start uh, changing sides. That will develop symmetry in their muscles, as well as coordination on their weak sides. Okay. So I'm almost ambidextrous when uh, doing the boat. Well, that's new. Um, you said if, if they have good technique, what exactly does that mean? Well, good technique means keeping your shoulders low, keeping your back arm level with your front arm. Okay. Um, don't squeeze too hard with your grip. Okay. And keep yourself calm, and uh, and and that way your aim will be true. So I just finished playing the game, giving um, a shot, it, and it was a lot of fun. And having the extra attention really makes it more realistic. The, the vibe control has a bit of a vibration to kind of simulate that, but the, the tension was was a lot better. Now. Can, can you say whether I was doing the proper technique or not? Yes, you were. I mean, it's also, in this situation, it's interesting because you're under duress. Yeah. The adrenaline is flowing, and this also tests you and your ability to calm yourself sure. and aim through. Um, and you did. I thought you did a great job. Okay. Your aim was excellent. You were into the game. Yeah, well, it, yeah, I love archery games. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And before you know it, you're having the workout where you're sweating. Certainly, yeah. Like, I, I play hollow point all the time, and I, it's like within five minutes of sweat, you gotta move so fast. Now, I know there's a list of games that you guys are compatible with. Is it pretty much any archery game? Yeah, just about any archery game okay. on the Vive. We also are looking to tap into the PSVR. Yeah. We created a bow for the, uh, for the move controller. Okay. And um, we have the ability also to create uh, bows for different systems. Oh, okay. So is there thoughts of maybe integrating for Rift or something with the, with the Rift, touch? Rift, Six Sense. Oh, okay. And, and others that will be coming along. Oh, interesting. Okay. Now, um, you guys are launching this year. Yes, we are. Okay, and uh, when, when and what kind of price point? Well, we, we, hope, to, we uh, hope to have a price point in around uh, $70. Okay. And um, Canadian or American? Uh, that's Canadian. Canadian, okay, so that's like $45, $50. Yes. <laughs> and we're looking to launch December 1st of this year. Okay, all right, so we're, we're not too far off. Now, what we see here, is this, is this a prototype still? Is there a refinement still, or are you basically complete? We're pretty much complete. We're just doing final testing, okay. uh, testing on the public, and um, getting feedback and making our last little tweaks, and we're ready to go. Okay. This, the bow has been actually in the making for a few years. Oh, wow. It was set up for a different platform. It was actually set up so that you could put your smartphone onto it. Oh, really? And play that way. So it, that was it, its beginning. And then uh, it's developed into this. So all the, the okay. resistance have been worked out, the angles, all the different technical aspects of the boat okay. are, have been worked out and tested thoroughly. So when I was here on the first night, um, the, someone mentioned that there's different tensions on the bows. Is that in testing or is that going to be available to people with different tensions? So this would be available to people. We have a, a youth bow, so okay. it's a little bit smaller and the tension is around five to eight pounds. Okay. Um, that might seem small, but after you repeatedly do it, oh, it's yeah. heavy pretty fast. Yeah, five pounds every half second is a lot of, a lot of weight. Exactly. We also have a, an adult bow, and that's a little bit bigger, and its tension is uh, about eight to ten pound drop. Okay. We also have the capability to make uh, higher tensions. 
uh, but we're finding that those are the best ones for us. Okay. Now, any plans to make uh, like customized or, or brand made bows for companies or something? Absolutely. Yeah. It's a, a great idea, and, and we look to do that as well. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting my hands on one of these at home so I can spend a good, good amount of time instead of five minutes. With them. Well, we'll get you one for sure. Excellent. All right. All Thank right. you so much. Thank you. So I'm here with uh, Stuart Muirhead from the VR Society. He is helping with the uh, Tebow uh, development. Um, he runs a large group uh, meet or uh, like a um, like a get together where yeah, people get to try yeah, stuff. VR meetup. Yeah, it's a VR meetup where people get to try a bunch of new hardware. And he's working with um, with the, the Tebow peripheral, helping them develop it into a, a proper product. Now. Um, you just finished up with the bow, yes. and you just had a bit of a workout. Can you yes. talk about that? Yeah. Well, yeah. We uh, we we just ran two interviews with Dr. Green. Uh, the first one didn't get taped, so I had to do two <laughs> sessions. And I can tell you right now, it's a crazy workout. I had a really good time. Yeah. <laughs> but um, well, as you can see, uh, Dr. Green's in there now, and the bow has about, this one has about a 10-pound pull. Yeah. And uh, it works right now with the. Uh, 11 games with the HTC Vive. 11 games, okay. Yeah. And there's like, it seems right now there's almost a new game every week or two coming up for HTC Vive that is archery related. Yeah. So what we've done is strategically place the controllers uh, and uh, for uh, ergonomics and, uh, and the string and whatnot, and it really feels like a real bow, uh, bow while you're in the... Uh, yeah, and, and I just tried it too, like 15 minutes ago, and I can tell it, it's definitely feels like a real bow. And I, I'm still have sweating a, a little bit. Yeah, well, hey, that's what that's what vibe's all about. Yeah, exactly. Right? You can't, you have to get off the couch. There's no more rolling the shoulders in it around game pads anymore. Yeah. You're gonna have, if you want to do well in the game, you're gonna have to get up and you have to get moving. Exactly. So, now, can, can you talk a little bit more about uh, the VR Society and what, what that's all about? You know, you're, you've been showing off a lot of the products that are out there for a while. And um, so what, what kind of uh, things have come out of that? Well, yeah, VR Society is about a 20 years in the making. 20 years, wow. Yeah, okay. I started at the first VR World Show in 1995 in San Jose, California, and I worked with a company called General Reality, demonstrating uh, some head-mounted displays and data drives for Motorola factory that hadn't been built yet. Okay. Um, and I knew nothing about VR at the time. I was a student, and I, I was able to uh, get a job down there work, working for this company for free, but I learned, you know, I got in the game of VR, and 20 years later, it's been a long road, and that's a whole other interview. We, that's we another have. story. We, we talked last night. Yeah. We're going to talk more about it, but we have a lot to talk about the history of VR and what's led everything to where it is today. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the VR Society is, uh, VR Society is um, a lab that I have at McMaster Innovation Park right now for augmented virtual and mixed reality. Okay. Using the latest in head-mounted displays, some augmented displays, some green screen, um, mixed reality, uh, variations we're working on. Um, and we're, our goal is, is to get products and solutions and commercialize in vertical markets and various solutions for vertical markets. So you're doing like development and research yes. and product testing? And yes. Okay. Yes. Very cool. So experimental stuff. Some experimental stuff and some old school tricks in creating solutions of off the shelf software and how we piece those solutions together depending on what we're, our, what we're trying to do. Like sure. Depending on the outcome or what the client wants. Okay. Um, and. Uh, you know, it's a lot of fun, but you know, it's, it's a lot of work too, oh, believe it or not. Yeah. I don't get to use VR that much, believe it or not. I have everything pretty much, I know everything, but I don't get to use it very often. That, that's sort of kind of my problem too. I have to test all the stuff, I have to test all the games, but I you don't really get to get really, really never ha ever yeah. had time to play with it that's right. not work related. So I, I can understand that. Now, um, you said that there was that you're working on other products other than this. Yes. Can, you, can you hint towards what might yes. be coming down the pipeline? Um, a, a virtual researcher slash telepresence application okay. for a holographic version. Uh, we're using the HoloLens as a uh, as our platform, development platform. Okay. Where, uh, one of our associates is a, a Microsoft uh, development partner, and we, we grabbed one of those right away, and we've been working with that, and we have a lot of local students at Mass University, uh, Mohawk College, 
and Brock University. Uh, part of our lab's mandate is to have those guys, the right people in there, okay. working with this, with the technology. Okay. We want to get some hackathons going in VR, AR hackathons, and and bring VR and AR to the community and to society in a non-hype way. Like we're keeping it real the whole way through. And uh, want to educate people uh, on all the various components of VR, not just a particular brand. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's, and there's so many facets to VR aside from the headline of display. Sure. So you're, you're not getting behind any particular brand, it's just VR yeah. as a whole and everything right. involved. Yeah, and then that being said, so we, we have a consumer the, 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 the TiVo by T Reality is a uh, it's a consumer product, but it's also going to be used for therapy uh, and, and just general exercise. So, in, in virtual VR esports, and we want to get people using it in multiplayer environments. So you're, you know, so that fitness would be a component as to how well you do the game. Okay. So that's one aspect, but also in therapy. It, the ability to change the draw weight will just uh, allow people to, to get certain postural muscles yeah. and yeah. get them retained within something that you want to get these things. Yeah, I, um, I, I asked uh, Dr. Ron Green about that. He said that they're he's looking into the potential of being able to adjust the, the tension yeah. for people. Yeah, so we have the ability. So yeah. we have for, we have a youth goal for about five pound draw, and we have uh, we have ten pound draws, and it depends. You know, we can we, we can just change the risers in it and for different draw weights as you progress. If you want to increase your level of fitness with it, okay. if you want to just do really well in the game, you want to keep a lower draw weight. If you want to get the fitness to go with it, then you we have the ability to do that. Very cool. And uh, oh, one other thing, we're we're also developing uh, uh, a solution for location-based entertainment. I can't tell you exactly what that solution is, but it's going to be amazing, and we're working very hard on it. And it's uh, we, we hope that the world takes to it really well, and we hope that there's some success in that. And we're going to follow back up on that. And that's very cool. Well, I look forward to seeing that and hearing all about it. Thank you. Thank you.